Thanks for watching. Go ahead and click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified of each new video as it comes out. Hey everybody, I'm JJ Johnson. You're watching Reality Survival. And today I am uh, coming to you from my new uh, canvas tent from Elk Mountain Tents. Uh, if you guys want to check these out, you can see them at elkmountaintents.com. Um, we're going to do two things in this video today. Um, well, three. I'll, I'll kind of give you a quick tour of, of the, the tent and what I've got set up so far and that kind of thing. And then we'll talk about, um, you know, what, what would these kinds of tents be good for in a prepping kind of scenario, you know, in a, in a SHTF kind of situation and that kind of thing. Um, and then we'll also just look at the tent itself. We'll talk about how it's built, how it's constructed, and uh, kind of give you a close-ups, you know, some close-ups of, of that uh, as well. If you'd like to, to kind of see a full review of this, you can go over to my website at realitysurvival.com and you can check out the posts that I'll have over there. That'll, talk, that'll go more in depth. It's gonna talk about like the setup and you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, as well as the, the specs on the features and, you know, just a little bit more detail. So you can check out over, check that out over there. Um, but anyhow, let's, uh, uh, let me just give you a quick tour of the place or tour of the tent. Now you will notice that I have this set up in my barn. And the reason for that is because over the last about week and a half, two weeks, uh, you know, since I got this thing, um, we have been having about, I mean, like 30 to 60 mile an hour winds and we're expecting a snowstorm tonight, but, um, trying to set this thing up by myself with the wind that we're having right now outside would have been a nightmare. Um, so, so I just decided to go ahead and set it up in here and I've got this stuff set up kind of organized throughout here just get, to give you guys a, an idea of the space. Uh, you know, this is a 13 by 13 tent and just to kind of give you an idea of that what that space looks like and some of the stuff that you might want to have inside one. Um, you know, if you were going on a long, long hunting trip or uh, backwoods outing of some sort or whatever. So anyway, with that, let's go ahead and just kind of take a look around real quick. Okay, so um, as you, I'm standing right here at the front door. So as you kind of come in the door, we've got a stove, a 15 gallon uh, water container. We've got my stainless steel uh, Zodi shower uh, back there. We've got a standard size cot over here. Got a table and a little propane stove sitting on it. And then, and it, you know, I don't know that you'd necessarily want to cook with that in, inside here. Uh, I suppose you could if you moved it away from the walls and had the uh, the ventilation open but then we've got an oversized kind of a big guy cot over here some foot lockers uh, got a propane lantern hanging there got a chair over there that's the front door and then the stove and it does have a stove jack I have not cut the hole yet but uh, that's pretty cool so this is a, a metal frame uh, wall tent a metal frame wall tent and here's just kind of a look at the joints of the uh, the frame and it has this really cool cable rafter suspension system that kind of holds everything together I really like that like I said it's got windows on each side They've got flaps on the outside that, you know, uh, close. I think they Velcro close. And then we've got, like I said, the, uh, oh, the, um, the vent, you know, up top here. That is pretty cool because you can open it and close it just by pulling the string. And then there's another string on the outside to pull it down. And then it kind of closes with Velcro, so that's kind of neat. And, same thing on the front side. You got that. And then this is the front door here. It has a screen 
see if you can if you can see that. It's got it's kind of a screen here with a nice heavy duty uh, zipper, and then the front doors also have you know buckles like storm buckles or whatever. And here's the, here's a better look at the at the zipper on that. And so this also has a back door on it as well. Now this one's not open right now, but as you can see, it's got the zipper right there too. So that's pretty cool. Let me take you outside and give you a look at the outside of it. Like I said, we're in the barn here. And so that's a 13 by 13 canvas wall tent from Elk Mountain Tents. There's the windows kind of rolled up. And one of the things that I like about this is that it is, it is set up, uh, it's got these heavy duty metal D-rings on it. It's got them on the top and on the sides so that you can set it up in a, in a back country uh, setup using you know, wood timbers or, or poles instead of the metal frame if you wanted to. So I think that's pretty cool because, um, you know, carrying the, the poles is not extraordinarily convenient. But if you needed to carry just a tent body, you could do that. So I think that's kind of cool. Um, let me just show you. This is the bag. It's kind of dusty. This is the bag that it came in. It's actually a pretty good, pretty good bag. Kind of reminds me of like a, like the old sea bags from the military. Um, you know, and it'll fold up and fit in there. And then I've got the, here's one of the stakes that they send with it. Nice heavy duty stakes. And then these are the straps for the poles. And the idea with these is that you basically put these over the end of the poles and then kind of strap it together with these straps. And all the straps are pretty heavy duty. They've, they're uh, like a cotton material and then they've got you know heavy duty metal buckles on them. So that's kind of cool. The other thing I think is pretty neat about this is uh, this is a polyester canvas. It's not a cotton canvas. So what that does for you is, is it saves you a lot of weight and it's also naturally more water resistant. They also go ahead and, uh, and seal all these seams. I don't know if you can see that in the, in the camera or not, but there is a kind of a, a sheen to it where it's got the seals, the, the seams have been sealed. Um, they double stitch, you know, all, all of their, there that you might be able to see that sheen a little bit better there. They double stitch all their seams anywhere that you have a uh, canvas touching uh, a pole, like right here, they overlap it and widen out that seam so that you got two layers of, um, two layers of canvas instead of one. So I think that's pretty cool. There's another one of those D-rings up there. Um, so that's pretty, pretty good. Uh, they've got tie downs that come with it. Um, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the wooden, you know, the, the wooden uh, anchor, tie anchor lock, anchor lock, whatever you want to call it. Um, because I, I know that these have, have kind of been known to be fragile when they're cut this way and I would prefer to see those be metal, but that's a fairly easy replacement if it becomes a problem. Um, we'll have to see over time how it does. But um, it's cool that they include the, the guy ropes, or the guy lines. All right, let me slide over here. Let me show you how you pull down this front rafter, or this uh, rafter vent. And you just kind of pull it down like that, and then from the inside, you can grab the other side and put it back. So I thought that was kind of cool. So that's pretty much a look at that. Now, 
let's uh, let's talk about you know what these could be used for and is it very realistic for preppers okay so uh, I posted this on Instagram and I had some folks kind of kind of say like you know because I had mentioned that I thought that this would be um, a good shelter for a long-term bug out situation or um, you know like a long-term hunting kind of situation or you know something along those lines and they kind of immediately went to uh, well that's going to be way too heavy to carry <laughs> and I was like of course of course it's going to be too heavy to carry the, the canvas on this alone weighs 50 pounds you know this is a this is a semi-permanent kind of shelter this is something that you know you're going to be you're going to you're going to want to use if you're staying in it for like two weeks or longer probably you know um the other thing that this is that a lot of other tents that preppers carry in their bug out bags are not is a four season tent okay this tent this is designed to to be able to to shelter you in winter with snow and winds and rains and you know all kinds of stuff it has a heater in it and you can put a heater in it uh, a stove in it um, so that you can you know create a microclimate to keep yourself warm but it's not super portable you're not man portable you're not going to be carrying this on your back so your bug out plan if you were going to use something like this uh, would need to include a vehicle of some sort and or horses okay I mean uh, pioneer pioneersmen and you know uh, frontiersmen and you know backcountry long hunters and stuff like that have been using this style of tent for a very very long time you know hundreds of years hundred at least a hundred years uh, probably longer probably 150 or so um, I mean pretty much since canvas uh, could be <laughs> could be produced and sewn you know they've been making these kinds of tents it's they've been around a while and um, they work well you know the military uses a similar style tent not exactly like this but canvas style tents and that's because they're effective you know and so I think the, these do have a place in the prepping community um, I could see these being used in a situation where, you know, as a, a primary shelter option for somebody who is going to, you know, use their truck and, and maybe a small trailer or whatever to load up a, a whole bug out loadout and then go to a location, you know, maybe they purchase some land somewhere or um, maybe you're just going into a national park somewhere or something, you know, or going back to a, a favorite hunting spot or something along those lines and you're just going to set this up and ride out the storm, so to speak. Um, and I mean, there's, I've done lots of videos on talking about the wisdom of doing that and, and all those kinds of things, so we're not really getting into that here. But um, the other thing is, is uh, you know, you could, you could pack this on a, a, in a large ATV or UTV, you know, or a, an ATV with a small trailer. Something along those lines, you know. Um, not a situation where you're going to carry it in a backpack, but if you were looking at um, trying to be realistic about being able to survive in the wilderness through a long winter, especially somewhere up in the mountains, you're going to need a heavy-duty shelter to make that happen, okay? This is just a reality of the world. If you think that you're going to go out there and build some kind of small little natural shelter or, you know, sleep in a tent that you've carried in on your back, a little backpacking, a little three season backpacking tent, and going to live in that for an entire winter in the, in the Rocky Mountains or somewhere like that or the Cascades or whatever the case may be, you're smoking crack, okay? It, you're, and, and or if, if, if by some chance you made it, you are making life way more difficult on yourself than what it would need to be. Um, I don't, I am not saying that a backpacking tent does not have its place either. Because if you needed to leave this location, let's say you bugged out with your truck and your vehicle and, and a trailer and all your gear and you set up a big base camp, well, and what if happens if somebody attacked that and you had to leave that, you know, on foot with just your bug out bag? Well, 
that's where you'd want to have that smaller tent and then you could set up even further location outside you know of the area so uh, I've always described my bug out plans in layers, you know, in, in where you have primary, alternate, contingency, and emergency. This would be my primary bug out shelter for my situation. If I had to leave my house or something along those lines, I'm going to want a good, high quality, you know, uh, wall tent, something like this that I can actually make a home until I can build like a log cabin or something if I had to, right? Um, and that would take some time and, and a lot of energy. So I, I think that this, this has a place, you know, in, in the prepping community. Um, obviously, it has had a long-standing history of being a preferred tent for remote hunters, uh, wilderness management area hunters, you know, folks who, who hunt out in the, in the back country and, and have to get way in there and that kind of stuff, you know, uh, outfitters for elk hunting and moose hunting and all those kinds of things have used these kind of tents for a long time. And that's because they're durable and because they protect their clients because they work well. Um, the next thing is, uh, you know, this even in just regular disaster preparedness, has a little has a, a potential uh, place too. You know, one of the most common things that forces people out of their house is a house fire. Well, let's say you have a house fire and you're having some extensive construction going on in your house and you needed a place to stay. You could pop one of these up on your own property and stay in it until all that construction was done or maybe you had tornado damage or wind damage to your roof or something like that this would give you a good temporary you know type place where you know you could fit a family of four pretty easily now it's not going to be super comfortable with four people living in here you know what i'm saying but for sleeping arrangements uh, it's going to be pretty good and you've got that capability to have a stove in here to keep everybody warm i've got two cots in here right now you can hear my son. I think he's getting ready to come in here. Um, I've got two cots in here right now. You could easily put two more cots in here. You might be able to fit a fifth. That would be about it. Um, but if you didn't have cots and you were sleeping on the floor, like air mattresses or you know just piles of blankets or whatever, then you could probably fit eight folks or so in here pretty easily with the stove. You know, so uh, you got a lot of room. Um, let me see here where I was going with that. Oh, the other thing that I was thinking is, is that, uh, let's say there was an emergency situation and, uh, you had a bunch of people show up at your house. Like I've got about, I don't know, 20 to 24, six folks that if there, something really bad went down, you know, we're talking like SHTF, but long-term, everything went bad, no power, all that kind of stuff. I'd probably have about that many people show up out at my place and um sleeping that many folks inside of my house would be very hard <laughs> be hard to do and so there might be some people who would prefer to set something like this up you know just right outside the house or close to the house or whatever the case may be um and and use that as a shelter you know what I mean? So you could use this for extending the sleeping capability of your own place during a disaster if you knew that folks were going to come to your, you know, to your location. You could kind of pre-prepare for that uh, either at your house or even at a bug out location somewhere, you know, that you maybe some property own or whatever by building a platform to set these on. You know, you could build a wooden platform um, you know, just have to be a little bit bigger than 13 by 13. You could use some pipe clamps, uh, co conduit clamps, and screw the whole thing down so you wouldn't have to have any guy lines or anything like that, and it'd be, you know, freestanding. And, uh, yeah, that would be, that would be a great situation, you know. So you'd have a nice floor, be raised up off the ground, you know, it'd sleep warmer. Uh, there'd, be, there'd be tons of benefits, you know, uh, about that. So I could see that being done either at your place or out at a bug out location too. So overall, I think these are a pretty cool deal. Um, now let's go ahead and talk a little bit about cost. So the cost on these right now, they're running a sale, is $745. 
and that will get you the tent canvas as well as all of the connectors and the cable rafter system. Now Elk Mountain uh, does a pretty cool thing. A lot of these canvas tent companies, they have like a base price and then they get you for all the add-ons. Well, what Elk Mountain does is they like to, to include all the most popular standard options with the cost of the tent. So you get the two doors and the screen and the, the rafter vent, the stove jack, um, and you know, all that stuff, you know, kind of comes with it. Uh, some of the extras that you can you could get you might want to think about are like a heavy-duty PVC floor you could just use a regular tarp or whatever but uh, those heavy-duty PVC floors they sell for like a hundred bucks and then they do have an additional rain fly on top of it and the rain fly is not so much needed for water but it, what it does is it helps to protect the tent even more from sparks um, you know sparks especially if you're using a wood-burning stove in a tent you will get you know little burn through holes and stuff like that eventually over time and so having that little uh, rain fly will help to reduce that and extend the longevity of your tent as well like i said this is polyester canvas uh, it's a lot lighter it's also stronger if i remember correctly it's just shy of being twice as strong as cotton canvas now the other cool thing about polyester canvas is that you do not have to weather it. Now, by weathering it, what I'm saying is, is with the old cotton canvas tents, what you'd have to do is you'd have to set it up and you'd have to soak it with water to kind of get that those cotton fibers to have some water in them and then they'd kind of swell up or whatever and then dry out and then they would be a little bit more uh, weather resistant. Uh, with this one, you don't have to do that. You know, Just set it up the first time you get it, make sure you got all the materials and everything like that and um, you're ready to take it out you know and so you know, cut your your uh, stove jack and stuff and you're ready to go so uh it's it's easier the other thing is is it's a little bit easier on maintenance as well um, polyester is naturally more water resistant like i said it's also more mildew and rot resistant a big problem that they have with those old canvas tents is if they don't get them 100 percent dried out then they start to get mildew and mold and that kind of thing and that breaks down that cotton a whole lot whereas with this polyester it's way more resistant to that ever even developing and so um, you know it's still a good idea to put it away um, dry but it, it's gonna it's gonna draw well one it's gonna dry out faster but two if not every single piece of it is perfectly dry you're not gonna have to worry about it as much so so that's pretty cool too uh, it's just a little bit more maintenance free now I told you initially that um, uh, that the tent came without poles, without the pole sections. The reason they do that is so it can kind of save you some money. They give you the instructions with the with the tent body uh, for the measurements and the number of poles that you'll need uh, to make your own poles. Now, what they have, what they recommend using is a three quarter inch EMT uh, electrical conduit. I believe that's what it is, and. Um, that will fit inside of the connectors that they provide with you, you know, and you can drill those out and, um, and, and use that, you know, for your tent. Now they do have these little spring clips um, available for sale on their website. All you gotta do is drill a hole, snap that little spring clip in there, and then it'll, it'll lock into place just like these ones do from the manufacturer. Uh, if you want to go ahead and buy the poles, then you can do that. It's about $1,000 even for the tent and all the poles and everything like that that you see here today. Um, and it's a pretty good deal, I'm telling you. It's a pretty good deal. Uh, take a look at some of the prices of the canvas tents, stuff like that. You can take a look at the Cabela's ones and you know other ones online. And uh, for all the options that you get with this, this is very, very competitive. A couple hundred dollars from what I found cheaper than anybody else. I think part of the reason that Elk Mountain can do that is because they don't have on or they don't have a storefront at all. They sell online. That's it. Um, their stuff usually ships within four days. I think I got mine in about three days. And um, the packaging, you know, it, it just comes in a, in a box and then in that bag that I showed you, 
and the poles are wrapped up in a double layer of like tarp material and you know kind of all banded together and everything like that so pretty cool setup it's not backpacker friendly okay this is a semi-permanent kind of situation this is something that is um, significantly more heavy duty than those kinds of like three season cabin style tents that you can buy you know online and stuff like that I have had many of those in the past and uh, I have purchased additional ones <laughs> because they inevitably end up breaking or the connectors you know the little plastic connectors break or the tent rips or you know it get, develops leaks in it and all this kind of stuff and it just that happens because they're they're trying to save weight and make those things smaller and lighter when they do that they sacrifice the heavy-duty durable nature of it and that's what this is this is a buy once cry once kind of thing right um, and you're gonna have it for the rest of your life probably so uh, pretty cool deal really really is um, I think it's worth thinking about you know if you're in a situation where you live in the city and you you know that if there is a bad event something really bad happens you lose power, you lose electricity for long term, you know, it's, it's not coming back and you start to see civil breakdown and you're in an area like that and you know you're going to have to go somewhere. Maybe it's out to the National Forest, maybe it's out to some business owned land, maybe it's out to private friends, you know, a friend's ranch somewhere, whatever the case may be. And you're going to have to set up a shelter and provide for your family and keep them safe and be able to keep them warm this is the kind of thing that you're going to want um, especially if you're in an extreme environment especially you know uh, if you're in any kind of a place that gets any kind of a winter and you have to stay out there through the winter uh, this is definitely the way to go having the capability to have a wood stove uh, in here to help regulate temperature makes all the difference in the world in you being able to keep your core body temperature at 98.6 okay so um, I think it's it's just it's important to understand where it fits within that layered bug out system it's, it's not at the end it's not your emergency bug out in your bug out bag it's up at the beginning as your primary where you're counting on having a vehicle you know, and the ability to load out lots of gear and all that kind of stuff to sustain you. So, okay, so before we wrap this up here, let me talk to you a little bit about setup on this thing. Um, setup for the very first time was, for me, it took, I'd say it's about two and a half to three hours. That's just one guy by myself, no help. Um, I never, never set this tent up before. I've set up lots of other, you know, frame style tents, stuff like this, but um, never set this one up before. And it, it took about, I'd say it's, it's probably two and a half to three hours. And um, I was taking my time, taking some pictures and all that for the blog posts and everything. And uh, you could probably do it in two to two and a half if you were like hustling, you know. Now. If you had a partner and you had done this before, I think that two people could easily get this set up in under an hour. No problem. Um, you know, is, is it hard? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a little bit of a pain, I'll say, because, you know, the canvas is heavy. It's 50 pounds, like I said, for this one. And uh, getting it up over the frame, you know, you have kind of the frame on, on uh, tilted on legs and getting that getting that over there was a little bit of a hassle but once you got it up over and it started sliding down the other side it's pretty easy um, you, you start with the rafter system kind of work your way up um, you know it, it really wasn't too bad but it did take some time now I will say as a as a potential item of improvement for the manufacturer the instructions that came with it were not the best they could have laid out the, the dimensions of each pole and where that was supposed to go a little bit clearer because uh, it did take me 10 or 15 minutes of, of reading the instructions and looking at it trying to decipher exactly where everything was going to go um, but I mean that's not that long but it just it, it could have been laid out a little bit more clear I think um, so 
Anyhow, uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, I, I really think that this is something that you should take a, a, a close look at and consider it. Bump it up against what your current plans are. What are your current plans for shelter? You know, what kind of tents do you have? How realistic is it that you can spend a winter in that tent? How, you know, can it hold some snow? Can it, uh, you know, can it take some wind? You know, is it, is it big enough for your family to actually, you know, function in? Um, and I think when you start doing those comparisons, you're going to find that this makes a great primary option. So, anyhow, guys, uh, check them out over at elkmountaintents.com. Uh, as always, I definitely appreciate it when you click the thumbs up button, when you share it with your friends on Facebook and Twitter, and, um, you know, all that stuff. And, yeah, if you got any questions, I mean, go ahead and put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer your questions. Uh, we may be able to get the manufacturer in there and answer them some questions, too. Um, but, uh, anyway, that's pretty much it, guys. Have a great day, and we'll see you on another video one of these days.